Hi everybody. Okay, there's actually going to be two introductions to this vlog because it's going to be in two parts and I realized once I got done that it was like 15 minutes long. Um, so this is going to be in two parts. So this is just the uh, warning to let you know that when it cuts off uh, to go on to part two. Uh, I'll see y'all around. Mwah. Bye. Hi everybody. It's Lady Mal again. Um, here for my second vlog. I just want to say thank you to everyone that's commented on Fet Life and YouTube. Um, I appreciate the support and the questions that have been asked. Um, I really never expected it to take off the way that it has. So keep them coming and I'll keep making videos. Um, today I'm going to cover um, etiquette, manners, posture, decorum, that sort of thing. I'm also going to answer the questions that have been asked. And then on Thursday I'm going to start my three part, part series of safe, sane, and consensual, and we're going to talk about safe because I think it's something that really needs to be addressed. Um, because some people's definition of what is safe really isn't safe at all. Um, I'm also going to warn you that um, <clears throat> I'm going to be very vocal because there are some topics within this video that I feel very strongly about. And if I curse, I do apologize. My master doesn't care if I curse because. Well, I feel strongly, and it needs to be addressed. Plus, I have notes, so if I look down, that's why. Also, I'll be looking at my monitor, so yeah, just bear with me. Okay, um, the first thing I want to what, what first topic I want to address is how do you actually approach a submissive or a dominant that you want to serve or you want to serve you? Um, in the very near past. I have heard of some atrocious ways that dominants have approached subs and subs have approached dominant. Um, if you're a submissive and you're looking around and you see a dominant that you want to get to know, be normal. Don't do something outrageous like tell them what you want to do to them and how you're going to do it to them. Just say, hey, I'm such and such. How are you? Um, it's not difficult. It's just like introducing yourself in a normal situation. Same thing on the dominant side. If you see a submissive that you like, don't send them an email going, hey, you're going to be my bitch whether you like it or not and you have no say in the, the issue because then you're just being an, an asshole. You're not actually being a dom. Um, so, I mean, the internet's a wonderful thing. Send an email. Send a PM. You know, if it's somebody in real life, give them a call. Say, hey, I heard you were interested in X position, be it dominant or submissive. And I'm the opposite and I'd like to get to know you. Maybe we can, you know, figure something out. It's just like starting a relationship, like with someone you want to date. Boyfriend, girlfriend, that whole thing. Um, it's not difficult. Um, how to be a good submissive. This really shouldn't be something I have to cover, but obviously it is because so many people don't know what they're doing. Um... To be a good submissive, you have to want to serve. Whether it be menial jobs around the house, whether it just be watching out for your dominant, making sure that they're taken care of. To me, that is an integral part of being what it means to be a submissive. You want to serve someone else. You want to make sure that they're taken care of. You want to be useful. I don't... This is where that whole distinction between submissive slave and pet comes in because pets want to be put on a little pillow with their little crown and be oohed and awed over. And that's fine if that's what the Dom wants. But the underlying drive for a submissive, at least from my point of view, is to serve, to be useful, to, to have a point in life rather than just being a fuck toy. Because, yeah, I guess if that's what the Dom wants, you can be just a little, a little sex toy, but... I don't see how you can get very much gratification from that. Um, I mean, yeah, sex is fun after a scene, I'll be the first to admit, but there's got to be more. There has to be substance to it. Otherwise, you're just fucking around. Um, honor. You really need to have honor. You need to have a code of, of ethics that you follow. If you say, Master, I'm going to do blah, do it. Honor your, your commitments. Um, have pride in yourself. Do whatever you do and be great at it. I mean, that's the easiest way to put it. Um, loyalty. If you're going to have a dom and they say, 
okay, you can play with whoever you want to, whatever, you know, or we're going to be monogamous or whatever the situation is, follow the rules. So show some freaking backbone and stick to your morals. If you and your master are monogamous, then that's all you play with. You play with each other and that's it. Unless the situation comes up and you talk about it and you make the decision. Otherwise, don't say, oh yeah, I'm going to be with you and then run off and be with 16 other people. It's the point. You're not building any trust. He can't, he or she can't trust you. So what's the point? Um, this is something that most submissives overlook is posture. When you're, and I don't know how well it's going to come out on the webcam, but when you're kneeling or standing or whatever, I, I, I hate this position because all you can see is the top of your head. Why would your dom want to look at the top of your head? Hold yourself up. Sit up straight. And maybe it's because I was a choir and band geek and I'm sorry I keep messing with this collar, but it's new and it's driving me nuts. Um, maybe it's because I was always taught to sit up straight. But stand up straight. Hold your head up. Yes, you can avert your eyes and look down. But I can still hold my head up and look down, but I'm still being proud. I'm showing respect for myself. So, I think um, some should do that rather than, you know, you slump your shoulders over and you, you lay your head down. And yes, it is a submissive position, but it's not very attractive. It, it crunches everything together, especially if you're a big girl like me. You don't want to be crunched together because then you can see all the rolls and and whatever, if you stand up straight and elongate everything, it's a lot more attractive. Um, which goes back to that whole, you know, you want to look nice for your master or mistress. Um, and then we have demeanor, um, which kind of ties into when to speak, when not to speak. You want to carry yourself. You want to let people know that you're proud of what you are and who you are. Um, doesn't matter what anybody else thinks as long as you're proud of yourself and you're doing something to make your master or mistress happy then be proud of it you've earned their trust you've earned the right to be called their submissive show it off also know when to talk and when not to talk um, if you're constantly yapping your jaws you're not gonna be able to, to take orders or be able to pay attention to what's going on um, I'm very much a proponent of don't speak unless spoken to Especially if you're like in a play party with a large group of mixed top and bottom. Now, if you're with a bunch of bottoms, well, hell, just talk. You know, it's whatever. But if you're with your master or mistress and you're in a group of other masters and mistresses or sirs or mams or whatever you want to call them, dominance, um, I don't speak unless I'm spoken to because that's rude. You know, you don't want to interrupt a conversation. Now, if they speak to you, answer, speak up, talk away, but don't just interrupt. Um. I just think it's rude, just in general, not even in the DNS, not, not just in the DNS way, but overall. Um, this is my big bitch, and I will apologize right now because this aggravates me to absolutely no end. It's called topping from the bottom. It is the absolute most annoying thing that I can think of for a submissive to do. If you are classifying yourself as a submissive, fucking act like it. Be submissive. Put your trust in your top. Put your trust in him or her, knowing that they are going to do do things that you enjoy. And maybe you don't enjoy them as much as something else, but if they enjoy it, then that's part of the, the, the process. You're there for their pleasure, not the other way around. 